Marcus Smart's playmaking is extremely overlooked, and the DPOY showing off how valuable he is offensively in the conference finals. Smart combined with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to post 75 points, 22 rebounds, and 20 assists in the Celtics game to win. Smart and Horford had the ultimate impact in their returns. The Time Lord had three blocks. Peyton Pritchard, along with Grant Williams, were both at least plus 37, and even my fellow Torontonian Nick Stauskas got some run. Three wins away from their first finals appearance since 2010. You're about to see the reasons for why JT and the entire state of Massachusetts are about to go nuclear. Before continuing, just 11.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. While Butler ultimately scored 29 points, Marcus made him work for everything, limited him to 12 less free throws than he had in Game 1, but shockingly... It was what the Defensive Player of the Year did on the other end of the court that made every bit of the difference. Intelligently setting his teammates up by dropping 12 dimes, Smart totaled his career high for single-game assists in the postseason, fueling the Seas to a 25-point blowout win, and sending Heat fans home with 7-plus minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Defensive Player of the Year also scored 24 points, grabbed 9 rebounds, and drained five three-pointers. A criminally under-talked-about piece of value that Marcus gives Boston is how he properly gets the four other guys around him open looks in their hot spots with slick passes, and generally, how he dictates the pace with his ball handling and feel for the game. Along with his passing, the Oklahoma State legend has shown off some solid shot-creating poise. Bailing out Jalen Brown at the end of this possession, Watch the balance and strength to embrace the contact from Adebayo and convert a ridiculous over-the-backboard runner on the baseline. He led all starters with a plus 31 net rating, and Smart also became the only player in Boston Celtics history to score 20 points, dish out 10 dimes, and knock down 5 triples in the playoffs. Coach Ime Udoka and of course this passionate Celtic fanbase needs their point guard to continue to be aggressive because the Celtics are 4-0 when Marcus Smart scores 20-plus points in the postseason. They're also 6-0 when he attempts at least 12 shots. Smart spoke on running the show for Boston after Game 2, saying, I just waited my turn. I think everybody in the organization and the world is seeing what I can do at that point guard position. Post-game, Smart also spoke on his injury that he's playing through, saying, I hoped I could get back. We didn't want to risk it in Game 1, but I told myself, Game two, you plan. I don't care how much you're hurting. Overall for Boston, whether it was Marcus Smart breaking Max Struess' ankles or Peyton Pritchard calling his fellow sixth man Tyler Hero too small, on Thursday night, the Celtics didn't merely show up to even this series at one apiece. They were out to put fear into their opponents and ended up delivering a message that the Heat couldn't avoid interpreting. Jimmy Butler spoke on the loss postgame, saying, I don't like to move on from this because it has to hurt. They tried to embarrass us. They did embarrass us. We just have to be better. For the fact that his team's lost seven of the eight quarters this series so far, you can't really blame Jimmy, who's averaging 35 points per game on 62% shooting from the field in the conference finals so far. Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo have been the actual Miami issues through games one and two. Hero's two for 17 on his last 17 threes, and Adebayo's 8 points per game in the conference finals won't cut it. 8 Mile Peyton Pritchard posted the second highest single game plus minus by a bench player in game 2 since 1996. Meanwhile, Tyler Hero posted the second lowest plus minus by a bench player in the play by play era franchise history, according to StatMuse. The Celtics played a ton of drop coverage in game 1, but Coach Udoka making the change to have his guys switch ball screens as much as possible helped neutralize the majority of Miami's action. While that adjustment was crucial, having the player who's defended the most shots these playoffs in Al Horford back for Game 2 definitely helped. Swiftly clearing protocol, C's fans received a godsend with the news that Horford would be available for Game 2. Opponents are shooting 10% worse when defended by Al, and the veteran picked up right where he left off in the second round, locking down actions in the pick and roll, with intelligent screen navigation and surprising lateral quickness. 
you could forget that Big Al's 35 years old at this point with the way he's moving out there. Only Draymond Green has a lower defensive field goal percentage than Al in these playoffs. The Celtics snagged eight steals in the contest and were constantly pressuring Miami. And even when they weren't able to get the steal, they bothered the Heat's ball handlers enough to regain possession. Boston forced Miami into 14 turnovers, pestering them with their length physicality that they lacked on Tuesday night. Marcus Smart played a big role in that, getting three steals and a block. He sniffed out the ball every time it came his way. Since the beginning of February, the Celtics have lost just 10 games, including the playoffs. In the nine games they've played after those losses, they shot 50% from the field, 39.9% from the three-point line, and 85.8% from the charity stripe. Boston's incredibly resilient, and they're easily able to fight through adversity with their collectively tough mentality. And after getting embarrassed by Miami in the third quarter of Game 1, they were fired up on Thursday night, to say the least. Here's what Ime Udoka had to say on how the team bounced back. Quote, we were upset with how that third quarter went, and specifically we got out-toughed. There wasn't a lot of schemes or defensive or offensive changes. They just came out and kind of punked us in that third quarter. Kind of reminded us of Milwaukee in the first game a little bit and didn't want to get caught off guard again. But I think our guys have bounced back really well all year, especially in the second half of the year. If a team is just going to come out and out-hustle you, there wasn't a lot of things schematically that they did different. We can match that intensity. We pride ourselves on being one of the tougher teams. And so we knew if we matched that, we'd be in good shape tonight, end quote. I want to know in your opinion down in the comments section though, what's the Boston Celtics best quality overall as a team? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Swoo, who says Andrew Wiggins has to be the Warriors X Factor. Dallas is proving they're the perfect matchup for the Warriors as they take a lot of threes and no team is going to outscore the Warriors from three consistently. I see Wiggs taking advantage in the mid-range because he's going to get a lot of room to operate as Steph Curry and Jordan Poole are attracting a lot of the Mavs' best defenders. That's why the points were so equally spread out in Game 1. His defense on Luka cannot be overlooked either. Luka will get going eventually, but Wiggins is an incredible athlete. I think he can keep it up. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.